4 BSO, I was Michelangelo The artistic flow coming from STL Most the legendary shows I knew I'd be a star Little did I know it wouldn't be from bar See, that's the big league, the radar online I wasn't the undefeated, but I still was gon' shine I took a few L's, took them shots like pop But then I got my weight up, like Jason Witten Look how I pivot like Ryan Clark, yeah. skipping Bailey, Shannon Sharp Don't have to scream like Stephen A to get my point across Climb Jamel Hills, yeah. won't carry a championship yeah. They were quick to pull the gun, hoping Rob would quit But 15 years later, Rob still the shit Rob still legit, Rob still on everyone Pound for pound list, Rob is courtside Rob is ringside, catch Rob outside at the 50 yard line Don't act surprised, Rob is a winner George Steinbrenner, cooking up these headlines What you want for dinner? Okay. The Black Sports Center, you know who I be Triple OG, the Ohio State University That's who reps me, I love for a friend I just murdered this track, call that a dead spin The headline king is back It, yeah He's not the last one. The season is young. Uh, there are a few more ballers right now that are very, very, very concerned that they're going to be the next Anthony Edwards and the next Zion Williamson. But before we get to that, this is Headlines uh, with Robert Littell. Happy holidays, almost Christmas time. It's the time of giving, and then I guess it's the time of exposing. Uh, if you were an IG model with a BBL, uh, Anthony Edwards found that out. One of the faces, one of the new fresh faces uh, of the league, uh, learned a hard lesson that before you give anybody any money, make them sign an NDA. Young ballers, if you're watching right now, if you're one of those young ballers that know that you potentially can be exposed to it coming up soon. N-D-A. That is a non-disclosure agreement. Before any money exchanges hands. N-D-A. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you, some of your more older Veteran players make the young lady sign the NDA before they even start talking to them. Yeah, and what I mean by that is, let's say you're a BBL, IGL model. You got your Christian BBL, like the one lady said, right? And you go hop into six-time all-star, $100 million contract players DM. As soon as you say hello, hello, is it me you're looking for? Even before you say hello, there's a PDF that comes back, comes into your, your inbox, or they may ask for your email or your text message. And in your inbox, there's a PDF that PDF is written real nice by a, a well-retained lawyer, NDA. If we start talking right now, you can't put anything, anything online. You are consenting to whatever we talk about. And then if it gets to that point where you get the, the fly out, you get to come on over to the crib or come on over to the hotel. There's more paperwork. Paperwork that says, I am consenting to these activities. The, the, the smart vets, and there are some smart vets in the league, they've learned. They got more paperwork than if you're trying to get a mortgage from Navy Federal Credit. There's more paperwork. You get an NDA right off the jump. You get more paperwork if you decide to continue on with the relationship. And the more you get, the more paperwork 
that's handed out. But these young guys, for whatever reason, the vets are not telling them about the paperwork. They're also not telling them about the type of groupie that they want to deal with. So you get a situation where I give you 100 Gs and just assume that person is going to shut up. But a person with a two-ton BBL not going to shut up. They're not going to shut up. That's, that's not going to do it. You need paperwork. I'm talking about Takashi 6 9 paperwork on them. And it's not just NBA players, NFL players, Major League Baseball, hockey, soccer, horse racing, even jockeys got paperwork. You got to get paperwork. And if she don't want to sign the paperwork, keep on moving. Keep on moving. Keep on moving. You decide if you want it to be public. You decide how much information you want out there on social media. Because you have something to lose. They do not. If they have a triple BBL, they have nothing to lose. In theory, what happened to Anthony Edwards is an invasion of privacy. Those text messages were done in private. Those conversations were in private. But when you have a private conversation with someone, they have the right to make it public unless you got them papers on them. That's where Anthony Davis, that's where Zion Williamson messed up. Now, I even say Anthony messed up even more than Zion because Zion just didn't say anything. Sometimes that's the best thing to do. Don't say nothing. Just wait till the next story come. Wait till the next Anthony Edwards come. Paperwork, N-D-A. There was a star NBA player, and I'm talking upper echelon NBA player. And it only took one time for him to have a situation. That paperwork was locked tight. <laughs> I, I mean, tight. And I'm, I'm not, I mean, here's the thing. I'm not just saying that because I, I saw it tight. That paperwork was tight. Never had a problem for the rest of his career. Never had a problem for the rest. You can, you can see who don't have the paperwork and who do have the paperwork. You can just look and see who has the paperwork and who don't have the paperwork. It's real, it's real simple to look out in the landscape of athletics and rappers and entertainers and know who got the paperwork, who don't got the paperwork. So I'm telling you young guys right now, paperwork, paperwork. You should have a lawyer or retainer. You make 10, 20, 30, 40 million dollars a year, whatever it may be. You have enough money to put a attorney or retainer just for paperwork. It should be paperwork that's like default. Like if you, you're in your DMs and you're, you, maybe even if it's you that is approaching the young lady and the young lady shows some interest, great, paperwork. Here's the paperwork. Should be on retain. You should have it with you. You should have your files all nicely. It should be on your phone, on your laptop, on your tablet, on your Roku, whatever. As soon as it gets to a point where you think to yourself, hmm, this, if some of this, Stuff got out. Maybe, yeah. Paperwork. Paperwork. Trust me. You need it. Don't think, and look, we've all had to learn this. Don't think they're your friends. Don't think they wouldn't turn on you in a minute. If it, if it's advantage to them. If, it's, if, it, if you like dudes too, same thing. I'm not discriminatory. You know, if you, it doesn't matter to me if you if you you Dwight Howard. It doesn't matter if you play, you know, you're a switch hitter. You play both offense and defense. It doesn't matter to me. Paperwork. I don't care. It could be man. It could be woman. It could be transgender. It could be any race. Paperwork. Make them sign it. Make them sign Make sure you got somebody. Make them sign You know, you know, Ant was like, show me the video. Kind of on his paperwork, but not quite. 
He, he got some video, you know, evidence and things of that nature. But what he didn't have, he had that NDA. There should be no reason six figures is exchanging hands without an NDA. <laughs> you want this six figures? NDA, six figures. Now, with that being said, right now, at this exact moment, someone is in the same position that Anthony Edwards is in, in the NBA. And if that person is listening right now, and probably it's like eight of them, but they don't know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> if that person is listening right now, sign the check, NBA. It, it's just better for you. And out of $100,000, it still had to deal with. Zion, no, no telling how much Zion is out and still had to deal with it. No telling how much Juan Miller was out and still got to deal with it. Right now, if you're listening, if you're watching, just pay the money. NDA. That's that should be it. Paperwork. Learn your lesson. Next time, do your paperwork beforehand. Don't do it after, do it before. If you do it before, you may save yourself some money. If you get into a money type of situation, paperwork. Don't just give nobody a hundred thousand dollars. Just don't give nobody fifty thousand dollars, million dollars. You gotta have contracts, paperwork. That's what you gotta do. So right now, you, you you know who you are. You know who you are. You're in a little bit of a pickle right now. You have very good reputation in the streets. You have very good reputation on the court. I personally, you know, don't think this is, you know, a bad thing. But other people may look at it in a different way. Pay the money, NDA, paperwork. Save yourself some out. You think about this. Deshaun Watson had an opportunity to pay 100 Gs to his original accuser, okay? With an NDA, you'd have never known about it. Marcus, relax. <laughs> you'd have never known about it. 100 Gs. Now, granted, he got a guaranteed contract, so maybe in the end, it, it didn't matter. I don't know. <laughs> but at least reputation-wise, <laughs> he could have paid 100 Gs, NDA, nobody ever knew about it. And there definitely wouldn't have been 22 others that he had to end up paying. Whatever he paid, I don't know if it was high, low, or whatever. It's more, it was more than 100 G's. Paid 100 G's, NDA. Paid 100 G's. So, so young athletes that may have gotten themselves into a situation, and you have to take accountability for that situation. Everybody has to take accountability when they make mistakes. There's nothing wrong with that. But right now, Cut the check, sign the paperwork, go about your day. It's the easiest way to handle it going forward in the past, present, and future. That's the way you should handle it. Speaking of NDA paperwork, Kang the Conqueror uh, is no more. Well, I should say, well, at least Jonathan Majors, Kang the Conqueror, is no more in the MCU. Uh, I found it interesting what he actually was convicted or found guilty of was not like assault, right? And not, you know, like, you know, being a woman beater or anything like that. He was found guilty of basically forcefully uh, trying to put her back in uh, the, the car, you know, putting his hands on her to put her back in the car before he took off, like you say, boat. Uh, running down the, the street because he was found not guilty on, on two of the more serious charges and found guilty on two of the lesser uh, charges. He probably doesn't spend any time uh, in jail and probably some sort of community service, some probation, and, and it'd be fine. But it was enough uh, public perception-wise to uh, get him fired uh, from the uh, MCU. Um, and this becomes, once again, a situation where uh, is a black man uh, the victim or of the social, excuse me, of the justice, you know, system? Is he the victim, not the vic the victim? You know, is he, is he, is he the victim, you know, or, it, you know, is he rightly charged with what he was being charged with? Um, I think it's, the, so when you're looking at a situation like this, right, you have to flip it around a couple of times 
and then ask yourself what would happen, right? Do we feel if this was, you know, uh, Chris Pratt, okay? That it was Chris Pratt with a black woman. Uh, they were having some situations and this exact same thing happened. The black woman was chasing Chris Pratt through the streets. Uh, they had tech, these, these text messages and all the other stuff that came up in trial. Would this had even been, you know, Chris Pratt called 911 because he thought someone had overdosed in his house. Would it have been charges? What do you think? <laughs> Would it have been charges? And if you want to flip it, flip it around even more. If it was a a black man chasing a white woman uh, down the street uh, after the white woman tried to push him into a vehicle. Um, and you can see on video her pushing him into a vehicle and then him uh, chasing her down the street, even if they had text messages from the white woman, you know, implying uh, that she had been physical uh, with the black man, would the white woman have been charged? Probably not. If you want to flip, 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 it is even more. If this wasn't Jonathan Majors and this was just, this was Jonathan, you know, Cartman or something, Jonathan Lewis. You know, whatever. If this was just, you know, John, you know, John, John State, well, maybe not John Stamos, but you get what I'm saying. This is regular old John, but this same situation happened or charges filed. Or because this was Kane the Conqueror, big black man, white woman, MCU, NYPD. Did they see this as an opportunity to once again send a message uh, about black men and white women? I mean, you have the answers to all of those. No one is perfect. Um, and I think sometimes in our society, the way that we judge people is if we're perfect. As if we've never had a uh, any type of situations or, or things that we regret saying or doing in text messages or physically or even outside or when we were drunk or when you were high or whatever it may be in our lifetime. Everybody's perfect on social, you know, media. Uh, to me, uh, this did not even seem like it should be a case. <laughs> if anything, it was mutual. <laughs> um, normally criminals don't call 911 on themselves. You know, normally if you think that you've done something, especially in 2023 where everything is on video, um, you don't call 911. <laughs> You really don't. I think he thought, hey, I'm I, if I'm on video, I'm on video running away. And I know that she went to the club after. And I know she's on some sort of drugs or alcohol or whatever she is in my closet. She in my house. I stayed at the hotel to get away from her. Yeah, it's 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 sad. But once again, accountability. You put yourself in bad situations, bad things happen. As a black man or black men, we have to understand that we have a very, very small margin for error, that when we're winning, when we're succeeding, uh, when we're doing well, there are people out there, white, black, or otherwise, that want to knock us down. They don't want that to happen. It's not good in general for society, just the way society looks at it at least, uh, to have too many black men doing positive things. <laughs> they don't want that. For some reason, black people don't seem to want it either, but for, that's another discussion for another day. But they don't want that. So you have to be better. We all have to be better. We can't, and, and we can't cry about the double standard. We know the double standard is there. <laughs> we know it. You know it. Like my uncle told me a long, long time ago, and I've told the story a hundred times. You walk out the door as a black man, you're down 14 nothing. My uncle said, hey, that don't mean you can't win the game. He's called me Big, Big Rob. <laughs> he said, you're not a little Rob, Big Rob. Said, that doesn't mean you can't win the game. Yeah, I was like seven. So, you know, that doesn't mean you can't win the game, Big Rob. But you're down right from the jump. You're playing from a deficit. <laughs> now, you go out there and you win 28-14. You win 35-14. You do what you got to do. You win in overtime, 30-28. Do what you got to do. But it does not change the fact that 
not just black people, but uh, just a lot of different type of people. And the United States of America, you walk out that door, you're down. You're down and, and you have to figure out a way to make up that deficit knowing that. And you're down in the justice system. You're down in the educational system. You're down trying to get a Navy federal credit union loan. You're down, you know, in your neighborhoods. You're down, you know, you're down. And here's the thing, it's not even just white people that's putting you down. You have to be wary of your own community. So on top of that, make it 17 now. Get your own people kicking a field goal, keeping you down. It's a, it's a tough situation. It's a tough situation. And, and, you know, if you're white, you can make a comeback. You know, Robert Downey Jr., he made a comeback. All right? Now, will John, maybe, hopefully, uh, Jonathan Majors can make a comeback. But for us, it's a very, very small margin of error. And it's kind of the, the that wasn't a study. But it was just somebody just was comparing when uh, white uh, women do either like celebrities or whatever, do porn or like Playboy or something like that, compared to black celebrities, the white celebrity that raises, for whatever reason, their profile, for the black woman, it lowers their profile. The stereotype is, you know, when a white woman does that, it's it's somewhat sexy and more alluring and all of that stuff. And when a black woman does it, it makes people look beneath them. How could they lower themselves to that? Look at Kim Kardashian, you know, for an example, as opposed to many others. So uh, as far as the MCU, I don't want him to be recast. And from what I've been told, a lot of Black men are very hesitant uh, to take over the role because it's a situation where even though they may not say it publicly, they feel like he's been railroaded. And, and and it could have been them. And there's no money. They're 2%. So, so I've heard a lot of Black actors are like, mm, I don't need that type of heat. You know, you want to give me a new character, you want me to be Dr. Dome, you want to be something else, that's cool. I don't know if I want to be Kang. So I think that whole thing is going to have to be scrapped. They're going to have to start off fresh. They really need to take a step back because they got Deadpool and Wolverine. That's going to kind of reset things. And let's just take a deep breath and just kind of start off, okay? <laughs> Whatever your plan was, just, you know, it was still three, four years away. Just change it up. Bring in somebody else. Bring in a different character. Just move on from Kane. Maybe 10 years from now, 20 years from now, he can come back, be totally different. But for now, mm, you're going to let that... Yeah, let that uh, let that plane fly by. Jonathan Majors, I'm sure going forward, <laughs> paperwork, paperwork. Uh, Jonathan Majors, paperwork. Uh, Rashad Mendenhall, uh, former Steelers, uh, running back. I believe he played some time with the Arizona Cardinals, if I'm not mistaken. Super Bowl, a uh, winning running back. Uh, for whatever reason, out the blue the other day was. Upset at obviously something that he heard from a white uh, ex player and said that the Pro Bowl should be uh, white players versus black players. Uh, JJ Watt had a little fun uh, with it. <laughs> Talked about that being a little light at quarterback because I believe the last white quarterback was Jason Seahorn. Of course, the racists have all got involved uh, with that. Uh, I saw Will Compton try to make a funny video about it. But he started the video saying that if they had two weeks pre to prepare the white people, uh, that would give them an advantage. And I'm like, how so? You both got two weeks to get compare uh, to uh, prepare. Why would the white players have an advantage? Why, what advantage would that give them? Are you trying to say black people are dumb? <laughs> that you gave us, you know, you gave white people two weeks that they can, you know, just figure out all black people. That was a little. Now, I, I don't know if he meant it. But that's that, what I like to call back of the mind racism. Like outwardly, you don't think that, but in the back of your mind, you do. In the back of your mind, his back of his mind said, if you get white people, white people are smarter than black people. So if you give them two weeks, that'll give us an advantage. That's what the back of his mind said. And it came through his mouth and he didn't even realize it. What a racist thing to say. 
that I don't know if he's racist or what his affiliations and stuff are, but for the back of your mind to say, look, if it's white versus black, but there's two weeks in between, that's, that's going to be the key to give the white people the advantage because, you know, you know, come on, man. That's very, 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 very racist. I just, I don't know. There's no other way to can't sugarcoat. That's just a really racist thing to say. And I know he was trying to make a, a bit of a joke uh, type of post, you know, talking about, you know, what white players they would have and how would the mixed race players go and everything. But that first part just, it threw me off so bad. I couldn't even watch the rest of it. <laughs> I couldn't even watch the rest of it. Uh, this is, this all goes back to uh, the media, <laughs> you know, the media in, in, in 20, I think almost 2024 now, it's not journalism, okay? It's not what they teach you in journalism school. Uh, I can say that confidently because I have a journalism degree. And I've gone away from about 95% of the things that they tell you to do. So I'm acutely uh, aware of what is going on more than some other people. And I went to a traditional journalism school. We're talking about Ohio State University. Columbus, Ohio. So this this was taught like AP to the dot. So I can tell you confidently and respectfully, what you're seeing on TV is not journalism, okay? What you're seeing is entertainment. When athletes get into media, uh, most of the times they have no formal journalistic training, right? That is what the actual journalist used to be for. Kind of give you, you know, that's why athletes do the color and, and other guys do the play by play. Because you have to understand how they do play by play. That's a journalistic thing, right? But what happened was, you know, you used to get your news, you know, and your sports from your local TV or from Sports Center. And that was very much a journalistic way of presenting the news. But what happened was sports talk radio turned into TV. See, that's what a lot of people don't talk about. You know, before, you know, pardon my interruption and before first take and undisputed and all this stuff, it was it was sports talk radio. That's where the guys who had the wild opinions, you know. That's where the people would talk crazy. That was the entertainment because it was radio. And the newspapers and the television, they were, they were strict, they were journalists, you know, they were button up journalists. But at some point, the radio people and the, the newspaper people and the TV people realized that's where the money's at. The money is not in telling a fair story. The money is, you know, just saying wild stuff. That's why they got on Cam Newton, which I thought was crazy. Cam Newton said something that in his mind he didn't think was wild. But they were over there joking it like they don't do that every day. They've told you that. They want the stories to be about LeBron. They want the stories to be about uh, James Harden, Russell Westbrook. They want it to be about the Cowboys. They want it to be about the Yankees. You know, they want it to be about Duke. There's a reason for that. That's what draws the ratings. And they've told you, even if something good happens, they're going to say something bad about it because that's what people want. That's what they see. So you see these people talking about white and black. Oh, that's great. It's amazing. That's good content. You know, for them. But the media, athletes, and, and don't necessarily are the best people to tell you something. And it's funny because you hear a lot of athletes saying, well, you never played, so how can you tell me something? Well, you never went to journalism school, so how can you tell me anything? You know, at, you know, and then, you know, you have an athlete say, well, I can become a journalist, but you can't become an athlete which is true in a sense, right? But that doesn't mean you're good at it. <laughs> that just means that people know what your name is. <laughs> That's why you have the job. You don't have the job because you're talented. You have the job because you have name recognition, right? <laughs> people watch you because they're fans of you, not necessarily because you're saying the most profound things or the smartest things or anything. And, and we've seen that just because you play a sport doesn't mean that you're good at talking about it. You know, Kendrick Perkins get his stuff from Ball Sackett. 
sports. That's <laughs> do I need to have that play center to get a quote from balls, a fake quote from ball sack sports? No. Do I do you need to have to play to, to call somebody garbage or terrible or say they need to be fired? Absolutely not. Now there are athletes that try to take the time out to educate us on certain things that as a fan that you may not be aware of and salute to them. They also make six figures and not seven. Let me repeat that. There are athletes that take the time out to show you things that as a fan, maybe you wouldn't have noticed. They make six figures, not seven. The person that makes seven gets his quotes on ball sack sports. The person that makes $7 million looks at BSO for the Anthony Edwards headline and then goes talk about it on their, their YouTube channel or their podcast. That's who makes seven figures. The, man, the person that makes seven, seven figures is on my site every day. And they've got the person that makes eight figures on my site every day. I see where they're coming from. And then they go talk about it. Now, and the same people were like, 10 years ago, it was like, this is not journalism. What, what Rob is doing is not journalism. What these other guys and young ladies are doing are journalism. It used to be a big thing in the blogger, quote unquote, heyday. What we were doing was not journalism. Not everything that we do, they do. Some do it pretty well, others not so much. So yeah, that's the situation that we're in going into 2020. A four. Thank you for, for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter, BSO. Uh, follow me on YouTube, uh, BSO TV. Please subscribe. Uh, Instagram, BSO TV. I'm ticking and talking at Robert Liddell, uh, BSO. And on Facebook, a Black Sports Online. I just got an email saying that um, my li- the, the, the place that I like to use my live stream so I can do them on multiple uh, platforms uh, are now going to allow me to see comments uh, from Twitter when I do the live stream. Meaning, uh, in 2024, uh, we're going to start doing the BSO headlines live stream. That means no cuts, no edits. Even though I don't, I've, re- I've maybe do one or two uh, edits on on these videos now, and you will be able to give me your questions. Uh, give me your thoughts on what I'm talking about um, in real time. We we'll also have a brand new hip hop single for 2024 for BSO headlines. The 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 new song. I'm telling you, you thought you thought the song that that we, that I did for this is fire, man. They better they better put this one on the bill. I might have to put this on SoundCloud. It's so fire. Give me some Billboard uh, chart. Uh, money put me on Spotify uh, with this one. Come on.